Okay, we have delete, uh, we have created get and delete requests, and now we go into the next step, which is posting, creating new users. So so far we have only worked with dummy data, data that I put into my code. Uh, now, once we have the post request, we can actually work with whatever the user is sending in. Uh, and post is a different situation. The same goes for put and patch. Uh, you need to look at the request body. So that's where the user puts all the data that he or she wants to get, for example, created. Uh, and you need to parse that. And if we use JSON, we require something uh, that actually parses the body properly so it gives us the right format back. Uh, you can do that manually but it's a, lot of, it's a lot of work so we use a specific module that exists in Node that's called body parser uh, that just makes it very easy to uh, process the body, the request body. So what the body parser does is just it reads the body, it converts it to JSON and it has all sorts of uh, error handling if that is re uh, necessary so we don't need to do that. Um, and the way that works in Express is fairly easy. You just include it using the require statement uh, and then you tell Express to use it. You just do app.use bodyparser.json. So bodyparser actually has more options than just JSON, but uh, since we use JSON here, we just say use this one. So now we can access the, the body and you'll see that it's fairly easy to do so. The next thing we need to do is actually validation. So we need to check is everything we need there uh, and are, is the input correct. So if you remember our data, uh, we had, we had um, username, that's a string parameter, we had age. So if you want to create a new user, you need to check is the username there, is the age there. And you also need to check is the age actually a correct value. So it has to be a number, it has to be uh, zero or larger. Let's not care about sort of maximum values, doesn't matter, uh, but it should definitely not be a negative number, for example. ID, if we do a create request, we do not provide the ID, we uh, handle it ourselves. So in our case, we actually have to make sure that the ID is unique. If you use a database, you get that for free. Uh, Later on then when we create a user, uh, a node, sorry, we have the name and we have the content, both are strings. Again, we need to check, are they there? Uh, so that's what we have to do. And the way to do that uh, is, and I'll just continue, so I'm not looking into the validation, but we just create a new user object. Username is the uh, body attribute username. So that's what we get from the body parser. We can just do requ request dot body dot uh, the attribute name. So request body username, request body age. That's what we got from the user. And then we uh, take the next ID. And here I have just implemented a small counter that every time you create a new user, it counts up. So that makes sure that we always have a unique uh, user ID. And once this is created, I just push it into my user array and I send back 201 created and I send the new object back. So this is what I have created. Um, that's all it is. Uh, let's look into the implementation here. So here's my post request and it, you see there is a bit more stuff than in the, on the slides. That's because I have included the validation. Uh, First, I actually check whether everything is there. So I do check, is the body undefined? Has the user forgotten to send a request body? Uh, if not, is the username undefined? Is there a username? And if that's not the case, then I also check the age. Is the age there? Everything is fine. Uh, if any of these things is missing, then I just send 400 back. I say username and age fields are required. So I send an error back to the user saying your request is invalid. Uh, if everything is fine, then I go in and I create the user. And this is now exactly what you have seen uh, in, it's more or less the same as you have seen in the, uh, on the slides. I create a new user with the right username, the right age and the next ID. I add it to my uh, user array and I increase the ID. Now the other thing I have to do uh, and that has to do with my internal data structure. 
you see up here that I have for each user, I have an array here with the user ID and all the nodes. Uh, and when I create a new user, I have to initialize this. So I have to say, okay, the next user is for example, 11. So please create a new object, user ID 11 and an empty notes array. When I create the user, there is no node. Uh, so that's the second part you see here. I just create this element with the right user ID and with an empty array and I add it to my notes array. And then I increase my ID. So next time I create a new user, I again get a unique ID and I return the user. So this is already a bit more complicated. Uh, and actually I have not checked the age here. So that's maybe something I should do as well. I have to check if request.body.age uh, converted to a number is not a number. Uh, so that should not happen. Or it is a number, but it's smaller than zero. Then I send back an array. Again, 400 and I maybe complain. H has to be a positive number. And actually, this is an interesting case because there's an error here in my code. Uh, as I've mentioned in the first part, you actually have to return here. Uh, this one would work because it's if or else. So this code would never be executed. I can actually skip my return statement here. Uh, it doesn't hurt to have it, but here I definitely need to add it because if I do not do this, then the code just continues. Uh, the user gets an error. The user gets told that the age has to be positive, but the user is actually added anyway. We can maybe test that just so that I show you the consequence of this problem. So if I run this code, now I can do a post request to users. Uh, now if my body is empty, I'll get an error, username and age fields. So I actually have to go into the body here. I have to choose raw JSON. And now I can create a new user. Username, Grisha, age 55. Uh, this works, perfect. You also see that if I add myself again, I'll get another ID. So the increment works. If I forget any of the fields, I get a complaint, username and age fields. Uh, and now the interesting part is if I choose an age that is lower than zero, I will get an error message, but this code will still be executed. So you'll see in the console that I'll get this error that I'm modifying the headers. Uh, but actually when I do my next get request, the, the user will be there anyway. So we start off by actually doing a get. So you'll see that the users have been added. This seems to work. So let's make a post request where I put myself to minus one years or something else. Uh, it doesn't have to be a number. Now I sent this, uh, I get a 400 back, H has to be positive. And if we look at the code, you see here the error um, that something is broken in, maybe I get the line somewhere as well, in line 50. So you see, this is exactly the line here where it complains that this code is being executed. And now the interesting thing is I have gotten 400, it should not have worked. But if I do a get request, uh, you'll see that it has actually worked. So uh, this is the problem. It's simply I'm forgetting the return request here, uh, the return statement. So the code executes and it keeps executing. Now, if I restart this, it should have worked. Uh, so if I do the same story again, it complains. Uh, and you see this time there is no error in my console. And this time if I do a get request, uh, nothing has changed. So now actually my, uh, my input validation has worked correctly. So this is how the uh, post request works. And now you can probably figure out how the put request works. It's very similar. Uh, you check 
that all the right fields exist. And remember, put is a complete update. So I need both the username and the age, same as the post request. Once I have made sure that my parameters are correct, I find the right user, uh, I check is the ID correct, and I simply replace the attributes and return the user. So I have done a complete update of the user. Uh, and of course, I can provide the same username. So technically, you can do something like a partial update, only change the age. Uh, but the back end doesn't care. It just overrides everything, no matter what you put in there. So that's what the put request does. Uh, we should probably also include our age validation here. So if the age is incorrect, I complain. Uh, that works. And now we look at the patch request finally, so a partial update. Uh, and there are some differences here. So the first difference you see is in my check. Uh, I do not check that the username and the age exists. I only check for one of them. So if the username and the age are both not present, then the request is wrong because I need at least something to update. Uh, but if any of them is defined, then this is okay. And I continue into my for loop. I find the user uh, and then I update the fields. And of course, now I need to check whether the parameters are actually there, because if I would just override it uh, and the user has not sent anything, then my uh, attribute would become undefined. So I basically say, if the username is not undefined, then update it. If the age is not undefined, update it. Otherwise, leave it as it is. Uh, and what you also see here is that uh, I can actually use patch in exactly the same way as put. So if I provide the username and the age, it works exactly the same as the put request. There's no difference. So uh, that's kind of the same. This is what a partial update means. Uh, of course, it, this gets a bit more complicated when you have more parameters. There are more things to check. But otherwise, the principle is exactly the same. Uh, if we look at a post request for nodes, our URL is different. Um, of course, the parameters are different because our nodes have a name and a content. So of course, I'm not checking for age. Uh, and then the other difference is that I actually first have to find whether the user exists. So I'm searching my nodes array for an object that has the correct user ID. If that's the case, I create a new node with the name, with the content, with the next ID. So again, I have some kind of ID counter for my nodes. Um, I add the new node to the right field. So in my nodes array to the user nodes array, I add the new object, I increase the ID, I return the node. Same story. Uh, we can also look that that works just to make sure. So let's have a look. Here are all my users and let's, for example, choose Bob. If I say get users 10 notes, then I should get all the notes. And Bob seems to have a shopping list with milk and cheese. Now we can do a post request. So we just post to this one. Uh, and I can just try to send this, then I should get an error. Name and content fields are required. I don't have any of that, so let's say name, content, uh, and both are strings. My new note, pick up daughter from the daycare, unless they're on strike. I do this, post request. Now I did not get an error, I get 201. Uh, I get the new object back. And now if I do a get request, I should get the right content. So you see that I both get my shopping list and my new node. Uh, you see that the order here is different. That really doesn't matter. So this does not matter in JSON. So this works. I can also do the get for a specific uh, node. So for example, 13. So please get me node number 13 for user number 10. and this also works. If I choose a different user ID here, so node 13 does exist, but not for the user five. So this should give me an error. 
Uh, and indeed it says 404 not found. Note with ID 13 does not exist for user 5. So this also works. Okay, so this was a single slide, uh, how to do post and uh, put and patch. As you see, they are a bit more complicated and especially when, when your parameters get more complicated, this code might change. Um, on the other hand, don't be, uh, don't be fooled. Delete requests, for example, can also be very complicated if your relationships between the different uh, data structures are complicated. So these things can evolve to be quite tricky. Uh, this is now the complete application. I have in the example material, I have actually implemented all of them. So I'll upload that. Uh, in the next step now, we'll take this and deploy it to the cloud so that we can run it not only on our own machine, but also somewhere else.